Hey guys, so probably one of the more bizarre things that I've ever had to deal with in my life. So there are a lot. So to give you an idea of where I live in Humble, there are maybe eight, ten anime stores in my little city. My little city has 16,000 people total. So like there is a abundance of anime stores or places that carry anime figures, Funko. No, I'm not counting Funkos like if you counted Funkos, then you would count all... I think we have, like, free GameStops, at least. We have a GameStop near the Five Below. We have a GameStop in the mall. And then we have a GameStop near where I get my hair cut. Then I have a GameStop where near my Walmart. So we have, like, four games. For whatever reason, uh, we used to have two GameStops in the mall. <laughs> like, you know that? I mean, that did kind of never made sense to me, but it was what it was. Uh, for whatever reason, we had a lot of mother effing places that sell anime collections. And so buying anime figures isn't an easy thing. And often, you know, I would have to overpay for these figures. Um, it, it's kind of sad to really think about the competition and just how it's evolved in time. Uh, so people open these stores. This is Collection Affection, which is co-owned by now a ex-offender i'm assuming he will be put on the ex-offender list uh that's where he probably belongs and uh reputation so they deleted all their social media before i made my first video probably because there was no tracks and people didn't even hear about this news without me making this video no one would actually know um, there are a shit ton of anime stores and you know a lot of them are engage in shadier practices and it's kind of hard because you're a competitor and you don't really want to call them out on it because like not obviously you gotta call them out in this but like on other like buying practices where they would buy figures and then they would say oh you know i have to give you a discount but you're i have to cut them so the condition i see this with pokemon and and magic too i'm pretty relaxed if you've ever sold me a collection and hundreds of people have you know, I'm pretty relaxed. You know, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If it's borderline, I'll always go with the higher price. Um, now, if it's near mint, if you're trying to sell for near mint and it's like heavy play, I mean, I can't do that. But I will work with you on the conditioning to be reasonable. A lot of these places, they'll, they'll do a higher bid than I will. And then they'll just absolutely destroy. So let's say it's a $1,000 anime figure collection. I offer $1,000. I'm going to pay close to a thousand dollars if not a thousand dollars i think for anime figures at collections i just pay the exact i don't really the box is a little bent it's a little damp yeah okay i get it um for this store in particular they would have you come in and then they would reduce it and say oh there's so much damage that was undisclosed and things so like i've had people who wanted to sell me a collection they got a higher price from them they went to this location and then they were, the eventual price was lower because they said that there was too much damage to the collection. But then they kind of force you. So the attitude of this guy is that he can force you to do things that you may not want to do. That is seems to be the strategy. And the other strategy is they start deleting stuff. It's just like Alpha Investment with MetaZoo. You don't like it? Well, pretend it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> uh, Graham Stefan strategy as well. That's kind of like the YouTuber influencer strategy. This was a pretty big store back in the day. It had a physical location, I think, in 2021. I believe they went online only. But the guy still is a co-owner of the online operation. And they have a lot of customers. And I know that a lot of them were younger. So I hope that this brings more light and in case there are more victims uh, that they come out. And they, again, you know, how do we know that this guy did it? Well, the person he was talking to was actually a police officer. So the person he believed was a minor probably told him multiple times, hey, I'm a minor. I'm a minor. This is kind of like to catch a predator, right? Chris Hansen, except with the police, not Chris Hansen. And it's a, it's very icky because he's such a big part of the anime com community. So I have dealt with him two times in person. Creep, absolute creep. Um, there, You know, I, I don't. You know, how can I put it? It's like when you meet somebody and you just know, but you have no evidence of it, so you can't really, like, just say this shit, right? 
But like you, you know something is wrong. Like he's, you know something is wrong that he's not in it because he likes anime. So for me, like when I do anime figures and anime collections, that's something I do with my girlfriend. That's something we do together. That we enjoy doing as a hobby together. It's a little stranger when you are just. I mean, were there any signs I could identify that I could have, probably not? You know, maybe I didn't notice any signs. Again, I only met him two times. One time was at a anime convention. I think it was in Pasadena. No, it was in Galveston. It was in Galveston. I remember the beat stuff. And then the second time was I actually went to his physical store when it was open. And it's a, it's not a bad store it, you know, I mean, he did actually, so people asked, whoa, did he actually work? He's a co-owner, but he actually worked at the store. Yes, he did actually, he was actually physically at the store a lot of the time. So this is a game store that was well run uh, in terms of inventory, in terms of stock, in terms of presentation. It was very, very clean. And I guess the vibes I got off him were that he would pressure people into making bad deals. And then that would later relate to why he's, you know, being in jailed right now. It's a hard topic, but I remember when Wizard of the Coast had a problem with this exact issue and multiple of their judges were found. In fact, one of them was so, so blatantly a criminal that Wizard of the Coast came out with a statement talking about it. And Jeremy Hambly from the Quarterling was the leader. I mean, he had found and investigated a lot of this stuff. Uh, Wizard of Coast was shady as hell back then. You know, it was it's a lot better today, in my opinion. But back then, it was like every judge, every other judge was a predator of some type. And <laughs> had a criminal record for doing so. And that's what uh, it is. Like, being a store owner is one of the worst things in life. Um, it's, it's like being a magic judge. You know, you gotta, it's it's a very depressing lifestyle, honest to God. You know, I'm so much better off right now not owning a store, but sometimes I feel like I should own a store because I have so much inventory left. But, like, it's, you know, if I had to take a guess, I would guess that there are a lot of people in the cosplay community, in the anime community, in the Magic the Gathering community who are not there for the right reasons. And some of them are actually just predators. Uh, and you, know, you don't need to take my word for it. It's just percentage, just math. Again, math is not meant to offend you. You can act, They actually have criminal cases. They might be on the... Like, if you want to look at something interesting, you can actually go to the offender list on your local area, and you can... Because then they, they have to register to show where they live. And you'd be surprised. Like, and even in a really nice neighborhood... Like where these offenders live, because they don't have jobs, so many times they have to move home with their parents. Like this dude's not going to get a job in a while. I really hope he doesn't open another anime business. So he's probably just going to chill out with his parents, right, in your neighborhood, next to a, a school. Anyway, disgusting human being, but what can you do? Thankfully, he will be in jail for at least a little bit of time. 